Internet, the abbreviation of International Network, was developed in the 1970s. On this network, the first website was launched in 1991. In 20 years, the number of websites has dramatically increased and currently there are more than 300 million websites in the world. So finding your way around may be difficult. That's why search engines were developed to help internet users. Currently, more than 60% of all web searches in the world go through Google, the most popular search engine created in 1998 and immediately adopted by internet users in its relevant way to rank the results. Search engines work by sending computer programs, also known as robots, crawlers, spiders, out to search the web. Robots follow links from page to page, collect the full text information from all websites, and store this information in a database. If you search, for example, information, information about cystinosis, Google looks through its database for documents that mention the same string of letters, cystinosis, somewhere within their text and displays them. As you will never have time to read all the results, Google uses a set of criteria to decide which documents to display first when you run a search. Google uses currently more than 200 criteria. The most known is PageRank. In this example about cystinosis, Google examines how many other websites link to each page found. Google interprets each link as a vote of support for the page and considers that the most popular pages are the most relevant to your search. Here are some basic tips to help you using Google. Writing search terms. As you are typing your words, Google tries to help you by suggesting terms which might fit your query. Here, for example, typing cystine suggests cystinosis, cystinuria. Selecting an option or typing the whole word will display the related results. Google also tries to correct your misspellings. Here, typing cystinosis with a mistake displays the correct wording. Search with two or more terms. Generally, when you run a search, you use more than a single term. Using a space between terms, we search for terms containing all the terms either together or separated in the same document, like here for thalassemia treatment. Search with quoted phrases. Using terms in quotes, searches for documents containing the exact match. That is to say the two terms together is different from the search without quotes, which displays documents where terms are either together or separated. Search with the OR operator. Using the OR operator between two terms or more, we'll search for documents containing at least one of these terms. Here, thalassemia treatment or diagnosis. We'll search for documents containing thalassemia associated to treatment or associated to diagnosis or to the two terms. Thalassemia treatment or diagnosis is called a query. A query is composed with search terms 
and may include operators like OR. If you use the standard search, like in this example, it is important to type the OR operator in uppercase letters. The OR operator may be very helpful when different wordings of a search terms display different results due to the variety of names and synonyms used by websites. Here, for example, mucopolysaccharidosis type 3, also named San Filippo syndrome, or mucopolysaccharidosis 3, four different wordings, four different results. By combining the four terms with the OR operator, will help you getting more complete results with a single search equivalent to four different searches. Exclude terms from a search. Google makes it possible to exclude terms from a search by typing the minus sign before the terms you don't want. Here, Google will search for documents containing the exact match health inequalities and will exclude the documents containing the exact match social determinants. Here now some tips to help you improving the effectiveness of your search. An example. What are the effects of growth hormone therapy on children with Paderwili syndrome? Is neither useful nor necessary to type the whole question. So first, remove the stop words, which are common words with no specific meaning, like what are the, of, on, with. Then focus on the specific terms of your query. Effects, syndrome, and even therapy are not essential. So, Typing in the search box, growth hormone children pedagogy may provide you with relevant results. Limit the number of search terms. An example. What are the side effects of treatments for multiple sclerosis? After removing the stop words, a good option could be to type in the search box side effects treatments multiple sclerosis. A more simple option would be to focus on the central topic of your search, multiple sclerosis, which helps you broadening the scope of information to more relevant resources within you can then search for your specific information. Think of word variations and synonyms. An example with a search on kidney cysts. Search terms may have multiple endings, like cyst, cyst, cystic. Google currently is not very effective in managing these word variations. For more complete results, also think of synonyms like renal cysts, a synonym for kidney cyst. So such a query will provide you with documents containing at least one of the two last terms, kidney, renal. So for example, documents containing kidney cyst, kidney cyst, renal cyst, cystic kidney. Identify alternative terms. A first search often helps you identifying alternative terms like synonyms. Here, a search on temporal arteritis identifies a synonym giant cell arteritis. So combining the two terms with the OR operator will provide you with more complements 
with a single search. Pay attention to the URLs. Here we are running a search on CAP syndromes, a group of inflammatory diseases. Reading the URLs helps you having a first idea of the quality of the documents and often identifying new sources of information. If it is not so to evaluate the quality of a document, like for this one, click on its title to identify the information source, generally available on the website homepage. One way to access a homepage is to click on the website logo, which helps you identifying the source of information and in addition, detailed information on the different types of CAP syndromes. Another example with this PDF document. Clicking on its title displays three logos. As it is a PDF document, it's not possible to click on any logo. So, one way to access the, the website homepage is to erase the part of the URL after the domain name and click on Enter. It displays the homepage of Printo, an international network on pediatric rheumatology, which helps you having a lot of information on the related disease in many languages. Filter your search. Filtering your search may be very helpful, for example, in sites which have not an effective tool to search without, within their content, or for websites which have no search tool at all, like Printo, the website on pediatric rheumatology. Here we are running a search about systemic vasculitis on Printo website. First, we run a standard search by typing systemic vasculitis in quotes. When the results are displayed, click on the link advanced search because advanced search is easier than the standard one to filter a search. As you typed systemic vasculitis in quotes, Google automatically displays your terms in the field with exact wording or phrase. To filter our search, we have just to add the domain name of Printo, printo.it, in the field search within a site or domain, and click on the button Advanced Search. All the results displayed concern systemic vasculitis and come from Printo website. Looking at the query automatically displayed by Google at the top of the results page shows that it is not so simple to build such a query by yourself using a standard search. Another example of filtering a search which is helpful to filter a search on a group of websites, on all the websites from National Institutes of Health in the United States. A search about Kawasaki disease, a systemic vasculitis. So, we begin by running a standard search by typing the search terms Kawasaki disease. When the results are displayed, we click on the link advanced search. Your terms are displayed in the field with exact wording or phrase. All the websites from 
National Institute of Health have a domain name ending with nih.gov. So, we have just to complete the field search within a site or domain by the mention nih.gov to get results about Kawasaki disease all coming from NIH websites. In this example, filtering a search on a group of quality websites helps you improving the effectiveness of your search. Discover the new features from Google. Google often helps you with new features. Here we run, for example, a search on sickle cell anemia. With the results displayed, on the left menu, click on the link More Search Tools. A list of features is displayed. Among them, Reading Level. By clicking on the link, your results are split in three categories by Reading Level. Basic, Intermediate, Advanced. You can click on any of them to get the related results. Another feature is the dictionary just above reading level. Click on the link, you get a lot of definitions about sickle cell anemia coming from various websites. And other features, for example, on clicking on the left menu, on the link more. If you need, for example, images on sickle cell anemia or videos or information from blogs, just click on the related links to get the information. And be aware of that there are three factors in any web search. Without search engines, without Google, a web search would be a tremendous challenge. So Google is a major actor. By collecting the information, by ranking the results, websites are in charge of the quality, the organization of the information, and also of its visibility on the web through search engine optimization. And you, by identifying search terms, by building relevant queries, by evaluating the quality of information, you also are an actor of a web search and not the least.